is if I look at the number one complaint slash desire by every agent out there, it's differentiation in value. How am I different? How can I offer value? There's like two different ends of the spectrum here for different lead generators, right? So on this end, you've got the referral based agents. Okay. So these guys are like, and this is the majority. This is most agents. They want to build a network of people they know, stay in contact with them and add value. Okay. Super duper, very much in alignment with my sphere of influence group book, right? I've also got a book called prospect. It's an even bigger book and it's all the different ways I refer to prospecting kind of in a unique way that's generating business from people we do not know. Okay. So expired listings, fizzbos, circle prospecting, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And I love this too. These things work as well too. However, these people are very different than these people oftentimes should be. Um, I believe you should do both. Um, this one helps you cultivate the business from the people, you know, prospecting helps you go out and meet new people, generate business right now, and then add them into your sphere of influence over here. <laughs> that makes sense it's very hard to get up in here but the uh, so, i know it's a it's a small yeah, narrow limited yeah the <laughs> talking with your hands in the zoom world during covid uh just it's tighter um, that's your next the, book that's right <laughs> so um prospect is for working for generating business for people we don't know right um so these people over here in the prospect land they're looking over at the referral based people and saying man i i i just want a prospect for business for people I don't want to know. If I call expireds and I call Fizbos, those are people that I know want to sell right now. The last thing I want to do is hassle the people I know over here and just be manipulative and just kind of like send them magnets and be nice and be buddy buddy and give them puppy paints. And then hopefully they use me someday out of guilt. Okay. That's how the prospectors feel about the referral people. The referral people look at the prospectors and say, Man, I want to just work with people I know. I want to take care of my people. The last thing I want to do is cold call people and get yelled at all day long. I hate it when people call, cold call me. I'm not going to cold call them. And what's funny, both are right. I can see both sides because that's the hard part of both businesses. You know what I'm saying? But there's really no other way to generate business in, in, in real estate. You're going to have to either build, you know, work with people you don't know or people you do. I mean, that's everybody the world right there between those two categories. So we're going to, I mean, so you can find excuses for both, but the point of the matter is if you don't know what to say, because you feel like you're hassling people, you've got a content problem. And in this world, especially, especially in the world after COVID content is king. So if you do not know what to say, that means you don't know how to add value, which means you don't have anything to give and you can't come from contribution which means you need to work on content. You need to find something to give to people so you can help people so that you are perceived as you're hassling people, which is why in the past people have given out things like calendar magnets or whatnot, um, because you know, people put them up on their fridge and it's something of value and it gives you a reason to stay in front of people. Now there's lots of things during COVID that we can do with them. Does that make sense? Yeah, I want to talk to the audience right now and see if they have any questions because you really brought up an issue that maybe in the forefront or back of their minds that maybe they're also feeling the same way. Like, what do I say? Do I, I do feel pesky. And so uh, anybody who's watching this right now in the audience who feels that way, your questions, how can we help you? What do you need to know? How can we diagnose, break that down or give you a sense of confidence around your content? And so pop that into the chat. And also it enters you to win one of uh, Brian's consulting sessions. Like we said, at the beginning of the show today, anybody who asks a, a legitimate question is going to be uh, invited to participate with one of Brian's coaches after the show for a consult on how they can help uh, them get member more clarity on their business. Um, and while we wait for some of those questions to come in, Brian, the next thing that we were talking about was the step after all this, when, the virtual listing appointment day becomes how we do business every day going forward. And so maybe you want to spool that up as we wait for some of those questions to come in. Yeah, that is, you know, we were talking where this came out, you know, we have a lot of clients, like I said, we, we found we, our foundation is based on the sphere of influence. And then we have a lot of clients as well too, that prospect on top of that activity. Right. So we're trying to, you know, 
so maybe we have an SOI, we're contacting them, we're running an annual database contact plan on them, adding value, but we're also spending a portion of our, our days trying to prospect for expired listings, whether it's new expired listings or expired listings, uh, they're old from years ago. Um, and we do use, we do recommend that clients all use Red X. A lot of them are in the Red X Onyx program, actually, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, and they love that. One of the things that has happened with COVID, it's kind of weird because with expired listings, I do love expired prospecting. I love it because it's, you know, a good expired prospector I found, if they can talk to 20, 25 people a day, they'll often get a listing appointment every single day, right? Um, and so the key is, can I talk to 20 or 25 people a day? And if we do, we're typically going to go on four or five listing appointments a week, and typically we're going to get two or three of those listing appointments, okay? Problem is, COVID comes along, and we can't go on listing appointments, okay? So that changes things, because expired prospect has always been a numbers game, right? Like, I, like, let's say, and this is not a good ratio, but let's say you talk to 20, 25 people a day and you get a listing appointment every day. Okay, so let's say you get five, and of those, or let's say four, let's just say, you, you not, let's say we get four a week, okay? And of those four, we're only able to convert two of them to listings, okay? Well, there's 52 weeks in the year, we'll give you two weeks off for vacation, that's 50 weeks in the year. You do two listings a week, 50 weeks, I think it's 100 listings you're going to take a year from prospecting for expires. And those are real numbers. Like that happens. You know this, Justin. Those, I mean, those are, you know, if we get a disciplined person that can stay on the phone and try to make contacts for two to three hours a day, they will get two listings a week, 100 listings, okay? But that's all dependent on going on those four listing appointments to get two. If we can't go on those four listing appointments, then all of a sudden our numbers go to zeros every single week, Okay. It's hard to pipeline expired listings because we don't have a relationship with them. With our sphere of influence, it's very easy to pipeline them so that later on down the road, we can get in front of them. But with expired, it's a little tougher, right? We have to really nurture the heck out of them and try to add value. So what do we do? We said, well, I tell you what, we can't do an in-person listing, but what we can do instead is we can actually set a virtual listing appointment right away. Except it's actually even better because the virtual listing appointment we don't have to set for four o'clock that night, or three o'clock the next day. The minute we get like a live fish on the line, we can set the hook right away and just say, hey, let me just send you a quick link. Boom, they've got a Zoom link texted to them or emailed to them. And we're instantly in a listing consult hmm. right in the middle of while we're doing contacts. So that way, because you're going to find if you don't do that and you try to set a virtual listing appointment later, what will end up happening is oftentimes they just won't be available for it. They will ghost you. And you'll start to see it's a like a 50% conversion rate from listing appointment set to listing appointment held. Hmm. So you're going to lose half your listing appointments because you set it later. But if you send it right away, they're still on the phone with you. And you can kind of walk them through clicking on it. And then now we're in front of them and we're in a listing console. Now we found once we did that, and this is all just trial and error over the last six weeks, to be perfectly honest with you. So we're winging this like you wouldn't. Be, but we have some really good clients that are really good at prospecting for expired. So this, so they, they worked with us on this. So then what happens is we, they were shocked as to how many people would just sign a listing appointment on a virtual listing without ever going to the house. Because it was, all of a sudden that was socially acceptable. Pre-COVID, that was not acceptable. Pre-COVID, you were a lazy agent if you wouldn't even go out to the house. After COVID, it was like, well, now you're responsible and you, you provide a higher level of customer service. So we so they would just say, hey, you know, in light of everything that's going on right now, would you prefer we just start out with a with a meeting uh, via video conference? I wouldn't call it a listing consult. I wouldn't call it anything. I would just say, you know, would you would you prefer? And now it's like a customer service, and they'll almost always say yes. Or you could just send it to them and say, hey, I just sent you a video link. Why don't you click on that? Next thing you know, they're walking you through the house, you know, showing you their home. And they feel comfortable that you know it. You can talk. All of a sudden, you can pull up comps on your screen. And with any video conferencing app, you can screen share and show them the comps that you're looking at. You don't even have to print out a CMA. You can just keep it digital right on your screen and show it to them. Then we can send them a listing consult and walk them through it by sharing your screen again. And then having them sign it via DocuSign or what have you. And oftentimes, you're done right there. And we found... 
Of the listings taken that started in a virtual listing console, 50% of them have signed at the listing console. Hmm. Now, here's the thing. The 50 that didn't, that's when we set the in-person. So that, that step is still there. It's not like we're giving up the in-person. It's we're just trying to do it via virtual video conference first. And if it doesn't work, then it's like, okay, great. Well, I'll tell you what. How about I get in front of you and we'll actually take an in-person look at the house, go through it in more detail, give me some time to get some more homework for you. I can pull up some more comps. And then we actually go in front of them uh, to actually set our normal listing console. But that then becomes our second appointment because they've already met with me and seen me once. So the, the likelihood of me closing them if I can get that second appointment now is much higher, right? Because we have a relationship now. I mean, we've actually talked, we've met via video conference, and I've met them in person, right? So we're actually thinking about doing this, this is what I was telling you, post COVID. Like maybe we should do this every time, now that everybody's totally cool with video conference, let's try to do it this way. We could always offer this service. Hey, would it, you know, would you prefer at least we, we, you know, we try to meet by video conference first? They'll almost always say yes. That sounds easier than getting my house ready. I send it to them, try to convert the listing console video uh, via video. And if not, at least get it signed. And if not, then we try to con close to the appointment in the actual house. I, I don't think everybody listening to this right now knows how valuable what you just said is. Because if I look at the number one complaint slash desire by every agent out there, it's differentiation in value. How am I different? How can I offer value? Yeah. And it almost changes the game where before your goal as an expired prospector was something of value outside of the phone call. The goal and the experience by the customer was usually based on most scripts, get the appointment, handle the objections, get to the closing uh, of the appointment. But now it almost sounds like with the video aspect is the, the call itself is an invitation to value because at the end of the call, they're going to get information about their home. They're going to get information of you. And now that the ability to have a listing appointment set virtually and closed, I think that is that sets up a whole new set of value for agents who do expires and FISBOs in a way that wasn't previously, I think, visible to most agents out there. No, I really think we're out in front of this one. Uh, this this is something we definitely kind of started doing on our own. <laughs> I didn't, I, you know, um, I'm all in favor of copying other models that work and 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 and, and then implementing those. But this this really is something we played around with. And you're right, it does work with Fizbo's too, the exact same way. Um, but it's really, you know, it, it has worked. And I just don't. The only reason we would stop doing this way is if somehow which I don't think is going to happen. Society got back to a place where um, we were all face to face and huggy huggy again. And I'm not sure that we're going to get there. You know what I mean? Like um, we may live in a new pandemic world where there, you know, a little bit of social distancing is always a good idea. Um, so being able to offer that, it becomes a safer option for people. Um, and if you, if you at least, I mean, also I'm doing is offering that to them. I mean, if they say, no, I'm an in-person person, of course you're going to go and, and you know, you're going to go. But, um, but by offering this, boy, is this going to speed things up. Um, and so the, our clients that do it, as uncomfortable it was to switch up their processes, because quite frankly, we've been doing expired listings for like 30 years the same way. You know what I mean? They haven't changed. It's like, you know, and they work fabulously. Um, I guess, you know, you know, companies like Red X have, have, have definitely made it a lot more um, uh, easy and um, increased our conversion rates tremendously. However, we've always kind of followed the same process. Now, though, I really think this is a viable change that can really increase our conversion. Basically, we're going to get more listing appointments because of this. And if we get more listing appointments, my four week to two could easily be eight a week to four. Is that, and, and that just doubles all our numbers. Right, right. Uh, across the top the line. Right. A hundred, a hundred listings a year turns into 200 um, and you're driving around less. So I think everybody um, likes that. And yes. <laughs> yes. It feels like feels like we have to bring you back to talk specifically about, about expireds one of these days because I would love to do a little simulation right now uh, of what it sounds like. Our audience loves this part where call it role play, 
if you could, if I will pretend to be in some way the homeowner who's agreed to the listing appointment online, just to give them some scripting language. I know scripting is sometimes not the best words, but just a model to follow. If at the end of that call that you make to me, uh, we'll just come to that point. If you could okay. then just kind of start to engage, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to send you the link, click the link, open the thing, and like walk me through as if I was that homeowner that you were trying to get the appointment with. So that way people kind of hear the tonality and instructions that you give. Sure, sure. I, I think I would, I would say something like, hey, in light of everything that is going on right now, um, how would you feel about us just talking about your home uh, via video conference very quickly? Sure, let's do that. Okay, great. How about, uh, would you like me to text you a quick link? Sure. Here's my number. Excellent. Okay. Um, so I, I text it, text it to the number. I'd say, go ahead and open that up on your phone. Great. Should be pretty easy to use. Do you see me on there? Hi. Good. There you are. There. Hey. Excellent. You're a normal human. Excellent. Okay. Now, depending on where we are, um, you know, I, I don't know what happened on the phone call before this, mm -hmm. but at this point in time, we have what we call a seller lead sheet where we ask a series of questions, right? Usually that's about their motivation. Um, it's gonna be about uh, the home, their degree of urgency. Um, and it's, uh, there's an old adage you can, if you, if, if you wanna know what's kind of broken down on a seller lead sheet, it's called LP mama, right? Um, we wanna know about the location of their home. Uh, we wanna know about what they think the price of their home is. I always wanna know that. Um, I want to know about their motivation. Um, I want to know if they are, uh, if they have talked to another agent or they're planning on interviewing uh, another agent. I want to know about their current mortgage on the home. Do they have a mortgage? How much they still owe on that mortgage? Um, and then I'm going to close to an appointment, but we're in the appointment right now. And that's mm -hmm. Alpha. That's the acronym that's broken down, right? So a, a seller lead sheet, I'm going to ask all of those questions on the seller lead sheet. And then I'm going to ask them to kind of take me on the tour of the home. I'm going to say, hey, why don't you, i tell you what, there's a little button up in the corner where you can turn your camera around so it points out the front. It's a little circle with two arrows. Do you see that? Um, and this could be a Zoom link. It'll totally let them do that. And it just points it right out the front of their phone. And they can just walk you through the home and just tell me about it. And so I, this is just like I'm in the house and I'm having them show me their home. They're giving me a virtual tour of their home. Okay. I'm going to let them tell me all about it. So now we've toured the home and, I, then, and then once that's done, we're going to sit back down. Again, I've asked them all those questions on the seller lead sheet. What's your square footage? What's the bedroom bath? You know, are you thinking about buying another home? Because I might be talking about that a little bit, you know, about setting them up on a listing e-alert search for where they're going to buy a home. Have they met with another agent? All of those different things. Are they planning on meeting with another? All of those questions I've already asked, right? Okay. So I now know everything I need to know about have they, have they met with a lender yet? Would you like me to refer a lender to you? All of those questions are on a seller lead sheet. So I've asked those questions. I've had them tour me through the home. They don't even know, but we're doing a listing of one, right? So all the getting ready. Oh, I'm not ready for that. Oh, you're already there. It's like, I just slipped the Novocaine in your mouth. We're going to pull the tooth out. Don't be nervous. It's done. And it's wonderful. They feel that way too, I'll say. Uh, so then once we've toured the house and they kind of settle back down to wherever they're settled down, I'm just gonna say, okay, um, other than the price of their homes, of the home, are there any questions you have about me? And they'll almost always say no, which means you're good with me. So how about we talk about the price? So I'll say, I'll tell you what, what I'm gonna do right now, and I've been doing this while they're touring the home, I've been pulling up my MLS and I've been actually putting together a CMA for their mm. neighborhood. Okay. Because it's a house. I mean, they're touring the house. Yeah. I mean, you could look at it, but you can, you know, you've seen a few houses. So you can pull up a CMA and then you can share your screen with them and say, take a look at these. These are some comparison sales. And when an appraiser comes and appraises your home, he's going to look at these values to determine what your home's worth. So we have to kind of sell your house twice, right? We have to sell it to a person that wants to buy it. But since over 99% of the people get a loan to buy a home, that lender for the buyer is going to require an appraisal to come in and have it appraised for value. So I love your home. It looks beautiful. I don't think we're gonna have a hard time getting a buyer, but I do want to make sure that that mean evil appraiser is, is okay with our price. So take a look at these values. Um, and you can kind of see roughly they're going to price your home based on similar size as these. We're going to talk about the price. And then after that, I'll say, and I'll make sure that they're okay 
pay with that price. If they're not, like if we're having a problem or they're uncertain, because price is your biggest objection we always tend to have to overcome, right? Um, there are other objections, but price is almost always present. At that point in time, if we're okay with the price, we can go ahead and just say, hey, I tell you what, why don't we go ahead if you can authorize me to start doing some work for you, I can start coordinate some of the listing information, the marketing materials. We can schedule maybe a photographer, a stager, things like that. I need you to authorize me to go to work for you. Um, when did you want to have the home up for sale? Then they're going to tell me because it doesn't really matter to me at this point. They want to put up Friday. They want to put up in a month. I'm good as long as we sign the agreement. That's what I'll write in it, right? Uh, and then I'll have them sign it. If not, if they're like, well, I'm not sure, that's, I'm going to set the in-person appointment. I'm gonna say, I tell you what, how about I take an in-person look at it? I can meet you face to face, you know, and then let's set a follow-up appointment in their house. And that's gonna feel like a follow-up appointment. Because if you can get in that house, that's like getting in a second listing appointment. If you get a second listing appointment, it's yours. Very rarely do you not get a second listing appointment. And that's gonna be the case here too. Does that make that sense? Beautiful. Yeah, I think you gave the audience a very clear step-by-step -step if they had to go set a virtual listing appointment right now, they could listen to this, watch the replay, and have a guide towards getting that stuff done.